So I'm with Sue Carroll, who joined us a couple years ago. Um, she came from a small independent brokerage mm -hmm. up on Anna Maria. And just for comparison, the last two agents that we've done these interviews with, they came from a big box. So I want to kind of get your perspective on what, ha what made Beyond stand out to you to want to join um, while you were at a smaller independent. Um, let's see. When I started at a small independent teeny tiny brokerage, when I say teeny tiny, it was, you know, 10 agents, um, one broker, one or two offices. And I um, went there because originally it was at the very bitty bottom of the recession. I mean, I'm talking, you know, it was 12 months of inventory almost. And um, I didn't understand desk fees and all of that. And this brokerage didn't asked me to pay anything. And he um, paid for advertising and did all that. So I thought, okay, this is a good place to get my teeth wet. And so I went that route to start with so that I could figure the whole real estate thing out. And um, it had its good points and its bad points. And so um, the good point was that I literally had to teach myself all about contracts, all about the rules, all about all of that, because you learn it in your class, but it goes in one ear and out the other. And so I had to figure all that out on my own. And then I went to, um, when I went to work for him, it took longer to get going, because of course it was the recession. And then it, um, I didn't have any assistance with leads, with anything. I had to do everything on my own. Gotcha, so kind of independent, independent, Brokerage, independent agent, independent agent, like sink or swim, it's all on you. It was all on me. And luckily, I had a lot of sales in my background from selling radio and television advertising that that wasn't going to be the difficult part. But trying to get people to um, look at me instead of one of the other 700 agents in Anna Maria was the hard part. Gotcha. Was, I was sitting in my office one day, and over the course of a couple of weeks, I kept getting these emails from something called side real estate. And um, finally I said, okay, I'm gonna Google this thing to see what it was. And it piqued my interest. So I answered the email and said, yes, I'm willing to listen to what y'all have to say. And so I got on a Zoom call um, with two of the people at side and I kept saying, what's the catch? What's the catch? What's the catch? Because they provided so much in terms of lead generation, marketing, um, instruction. I mean, the list went on and on and then I got to choose from like around the area, around all of Florida, um, mm -hmm. brokerages. And so then I started talking, I talked to y'all, I talked to you and Wendy, and um, I was like, okay, I think I wanna do this. And that was it, I liked the whole thing. Um, there's so much uh, to it in terms of helping me be a better agent and giving me the tools that I need to succeed. And so um, it was kind of a no brainer. Gotcha. And we've all, like our mantra is we're agent centric. We're here to support our agents to do more business mm -hmm. and, and, and grow their business. What would you say are some of the tools and the things that we do differently that have helped you grow your business, but also feel more confident in what you're doing? So I know there's a lot of agents out there, especially right now, that probably feel lost because there's just not that support and the tools there to give an agent confidence. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it, or just, just some um, of the few that, well, that we offer? All of the training, the training, training, training. I will, you know, put, stake my life on that. Um, uh, I'll be honest with you, and I probably, uh, you may not record this, but Tom Ferry, I used yeah. to roll my eyes when I'd get all the things for him, but Tom Ferry's brilliant. Um, and, you know, Emily's brilliant. Um, and that has been the biggest, biggest asset I could say for this. I have learned so much in how to handle different situations, how to approach, um, you know, for sale by owners, how to approach expireds, how to approach anybody and um, questions to ask. And the way to do it is just amazing because I'm not just flying by the seat of my pants. I have a plan going into it. And um, that has been enormous. Um, and then also internally, um, having a transaction coordinator. Yes, yeah, so tell me about this. This I know this was one of the things that I know most agents are like, I can't give up the, the admin mm -hmm. task of things. But let everyone know kind of what we're doing on our back end that just takes so much of that off your desk. 
off your plate, off your desk, um, and helps you focus on just doing more deals? Well, I'm still a work in progress on that. Um, I'm a control freak. And so the idea of someone else handling all the little itty bitty details for me was just something I couldn't wrap my arms around. But um, there's someone who's sending out my emails, which is phenomenal. When I have a new listing start, we've got an assistant who gets all of the um, email addresses together and shoots all the emails out for me. She creates the posts if I wanted to for social media. She does all my, you know, things like that. Um, I've got a transaction coordinator who handles all the back end stuff of the transaction. So I handle everything that has to be done physically. But she's behind me, reminding me of due dates, reminding me that I've got this, get this to her, that to her. And um, at first, I, you know, she had to tell me to quit doing her job because I was doing it faster than she was. <laughs> But um, once I let go, I, you know, I would never, ever, ever go back to not having a transaction coordinator. Right. So it's, it's allowing you to do more productive tasks of building that relationship mm -hmm. with a client, um, prospecting more to get more business, nurturing leads, you know, picking up the phone, working your sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. the, the, more of the money making tasks versus the, the time stuff. We, the time we know. You're probably spending, the average agent is spending over 30 hours on paperwork, a oh, transaction, yeah. right? And I mean, that, that's 30 hours you could be using to get more business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that, you know, it, it is hard to, to let go of. But once you start realizing how much easier it is to repeat business when you're not bogged down, it's huge. Oh, it's wonderful. My husband is asking me, like, on my first couple of transactions here, why I was so calm and not freaking out over deadlines and trying to make sure I had everything in. And I said, because Jamie's doing that, I don't have to worry about it. And he was like, you're a whole different person here because you aren't just, yeah. I mean, like running around like a chicken with your head cut off. And with that, I know we've worked on you or worked with you a lot on time blocking, time management mm -hmm. to get that work, work life balance. Tell us a little bit about that and how that, again, you're not, you're, you're a different person. You're not as stressed and anxiety is not there of trying to remember every little thing every little thing um through tom ferry i'll give him credit for this and give emily our coach credit um i learned to time block and i started time blocking because of course as a real estate agent anybody will tell you we have our phone in our hand 24 7 and um i have got to have a work-life balance i'm not someone who can work 24 7 and um that was kind of sucking the life out of me. So I learned a time block where I have a set amount of time in the morning to make phone calls, um, get appointments, have conversations and all of that. Then in the afternoon, I have three to four hours blocked out each day that's for appointments. And that's where I go have appointments. In between there, I'll do paperwork. Um, I set aside uh, a four hour period, one day a week for doing nothing but um, creating videos and um, creating social media posts and all of that. And it's allowed me to kind of stay on track and not deviate and going down the rabbit hole, yep. like everybody you, says. Do you feel with, with doing that, you're more consistent on everything you're doing because you're a lot in yourself specific time I'm to working stay on consistent? It. It's, I'll tell Probably. you, this is the hardest thing I've ever done is to stay focused because you do. You go down the rabbit hole on something. Yep. And then you have to stop and step back and say, nope, it is 9.45 a.m. I am not doing that right now. I'll write that down and I'll do it later. Yep. And so um, now I'm trying to get more specific to nail down because we do have lead generation. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes, and I think all of us at Beyond will say that, it gets kicked to the back end. And yep. I think you'll agree because you get irritated with us. But um, <laughs> You know, but it does. And so now I've got to whittle that down and say, okay, 30 minutes is nothing but this. Yep. And 30 minutes is nothing but this. Yeah, no, it definitely, like I said, helps. You could, you definitely feel you've got more, a more productive day. Yeah, like oh, said, God, yeah. The rabbit hole, you get to the end of the day and you're like. I didn't do anything. Exactly. Anyway, I can see it with the videos you're putting out on your social media. It's just, it's really consistent. Um, and through consistency, you're getting better at doing everything as well. Well, so I can do it, yeah. Repetition, right? Videos you can do where it used to take me four hours to do one video because um, I was so critical on, oh, I had hair out of place. Oh, I had this. Oh, I had that. And it doesn't look any different when you do it. 
the right way. Right. And I can sit and knock videos. I can do four videos in four hours now and do a whole week and be done with it. And with that, let everyone know kind of how you started and then the views and everything that you're getting now on your videos from just staying consistent. For, for those that are interested in it's, doing more I, I'm videos, Again, products. I'm a work in progress there because I don't quite understand the whole thing. Um, but when you have your educational videos and you're trying to talk about real estate a little bit, uh, you're not going to get enormous views, but you're going to get people who stay with it that want to know, and that's it. But then you do things with the community. Um, the Gulf of Mexico can garner you infinite number of videos or, or views. Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing things like that, people outside your um I guess circle or whatever they're called on Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. um, Outside your fault. Yeah, you're, yeah. Hit, you're hitting more people. They all, I mean, I did one and I put, you know, it was just the Gulf of Mexico. And it was about being on the beach and having time to yourself and all of that. I had almost 5,000 views on that. And I thought maybe a hacker had gotten into it. But no. no you just got more views. So, more you know, views. and so I still get more on views it. on the educational stuff now. Um, you know, but it's, it, it, it works. It yep. works. And I have gotten, I've gotten, I've never gotten a listing off of um, Instagram, but I've gotten two buyers. So there that works. That's, it's lead generation as well, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it is. again, it's just staying consistent to get, to get more views and or build a more loyal base. Like I, I do a lot, people know I do a lot more educational videos. They're not the most exciting. So, you know, I'm not but dancing, tell, yeah. I'm not spinning around on my head. I'm not doing stupid stuff, but yeah. I'll get messages all the time. Hey man. Thanks for the information. We've actually mm -hmm. been thinking about selling our house right now. And what you said recently with it's, there's a sweet spot for sellers with the inventory in the market right now, regardless of rates, we're actually thinking of selling our home. Can we get together and, and sit down? So, you know, yeah, the, the boring content builds you a loyal following. Yeah. It's a smaller base, but you'll get people from it. And then once you do something that's a bit more yeah. general and fun, you're, you're going to reap the rewards. You do. And I'm not going to do that. the pointing at the different things and the dancing I can't, I can't and see you, doing that. you know no yeah. I tried it once and I thought I look like an idiot I'm not doing this so I you know I yeah. decided I had to be me there you go that's be, being authentic being authentic so this is also the first time you've been part of a team mm -hmm. what is the main differences that you've noticed that's helped you with your business being part of a team versus solo and what are the things you enjoy most about being part of the team as well? Um, well, I would say first and foremost, um, someone always has an answer for any question. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I like being part of a team. It kind of pushes me. I'm not competitive. I don't compete with others, you know, on the mm -hmm. team. But it drives me to do more. If right, that makes you, any you, you sense. Wanna, you want to do better. I want to do better. Day, because you're, see, you're seeing what other people are doing. You're like, while you're not competitive, you're like, I, I, can, I can step it up a little bit. Or I can, I, step I, it I up. can give that a go. Or, yeah. You know. I'm competitive with yep. myself. And yep. I'm very hard on myself. Um, and, you know, and all of a sudden I'll feel like I haven't done much. And then someone on the team is kind of pointing out everything that I've done. And I think, oh, yeah, I guess I have. Yep. Yep. So, so with that as well, obviously we do kind of quarterly deep dives and I know on the last one you're like oh man I'm behind and then once we really kind of jumped into it with with me and Lorena and kind of looked at the numbers you're basically right where you want to be to hit your yes, goals. Yes I didn't realize so that. So how how does having that support system around you help you feel a little bit more confident um, or how does it help you in general not beat yourself up because you are your probably your own worst critic? Oh I'm horribly my own worst enemy. Um, it's helped me because um, it allows, it forces me to step back and look at the bigger picture and realize because we get caught up in the day to day stuff. And um, my business has always come like in waves like that. Mm -hmm. It's feast or famine. And um, I'm trying to get it to a point where it's just nice and steady. Um, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Mm -hmm. And so watching this and being able to apply everything. Uh, that I'm doing is kind of building that. I have, I feel like I have more momentum for the next thing because I'm not having to stop and step back and do all the mundane the, back stuff. Back to the admin and task, then, right? Yeah, you and then you, you know, business. you and Lorraine are standing there like, why do you think you're doing so badly? Look where you are. 
you know, yeah. you'd be ahead of the game had this not happened. Yeah. Be, and so, be, being a data nerd, we can show you mm -hmm. the graphics and the numbers to make you realize that you're actually doing better yeah. than you think you then, are, right? Yeah. So like, I don't keep up with all that yeah. stuff. And again, most agents don't. Everyone between Eli and Deb that we've done these interviews so far, it's the, it's the same thing. It's like, we're taking so much off your plate to just keep you focused on mm -hmm. the next deal, right? And, and working what you've got and building your business that you don't, you're not even thinking about mm -hmm. that. So, and again, it's taking a weight off you to help you do more business. Yeah. So jumping back into the Tom Ferry coaching, what would you say are some of the main skills that you've learned that add the most value to you being part of, part of the team in the brokerage here? Um, well, let's see, different ones. Um, Jason Pantana has done amazing things with helping me figure out social media. Mm -hmm. And um, I've gone to two Marketing Edge events. And each time I've taken away something new and something that I didn't catch the time before, which is great. And so I think that's been a big help. I think that um, the, all of the um, webinars and all of the live meetings and the coaching and learning how to question people and ask questions so that you don't look like you're you know, trying to steal a listing that may not exist and right. learning how to get people, kind of get people to where they need to be. Uh, it's without, more, I think the the main thing, like what you're saying there, is we're not telling someone to yeah. sell them. It's more asking them questions to get to a place where we know exactly what they're wanting mm -hmm. to serve them better, give them a better experience. Yeah, I think that that's huge right now because we're still going out to restaurants. Right, COVID long gone, but the service is absolutely terrible. Services and the consumer just wants good service mm -hmm. and added value and if you're trying to ram something down someone's throat by telling them something you, you're as bad as you know the the service staff at, at that restaurant that you'll never go back to Did you, yeah, exactly and i actually i got a text um from a client whose home is listed with me right now and Originally, when we sat down to do the listing, she said, well, I'm going to interview two other agents. I just want you to know that. And I said, you can interview 10 other agents. You're still going to pick me. I promise you. And um, so she, we went through the whole thing. I took through the whole process. And after we were done, uh, she said, wow. And uh, she used to do training for one of the big box real estate companies. And she said, wow, I've never seen anything like this. And she said, you all really step it up and your hands above anyone else. And she said, this is amazing. And then she texted me the other day and she said, I just have to tell you how much I enjoy working with you because you and your company are so professional. You are so buttoned up. You have all of your I's dotted and your T's crossed and you're not overbearing. Not overbearing. And again, it's, it's adding value mm -hmm. from showing you care about that client. Mm -hmm. you know, beyond Realty, we're going above and beyond yeah. white glove service and we all, I think we all agree that selling is not, telling is not selling. Telling is not selling. And it's cringy and that's not how we're going to do business. Will we lose some business from not being that way? Potentially, but in the long run, I think we're just adding more value yeah. and just giving, giving the client, like they've experienced, who's done sales training and we're doing it a different way mm -hmm. and like, that's better. It's not salesy. It's just, no, just quality. It's information. Care. Information. Here, you know, and it just, it makes it easier to go out there and apply it. Um, and that's what I like. Because I'm not pushy. Sometimes I'm a little, I need to be a little more pushy, but I just can't do it. But what stands out to me, what you said is, you can interview 10 agents, but I know you're going to mm -hmm. hire me. Because of, you've got confidence now yeah. in what, what we've been building yeah. up to on, on getting listings as well, which I think is massive. But having that kind of confidence going into mm -hmm. a listing appointment. Um, and add in the value that you're adding and not panicking or the what if, you know, that yeah. go in on everyone's head. We can get you to use these skills to be that confident when you go in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if it's not signed on the dotted line, when you walk out of there, you know, you're getting that call. I want to get the call because I do get the call. The, um, yeah. So. Beautiful. So we take our core values and culture mm -hmm. really seriously here. Obviously, you are like, I remember sitting down with you, grabbing a coffee, and like, Susan, like, she just ticks all the boxes, right? What is, what is it for you that's important that you've realized about 
office culture and having aligned core values? Um, the biggest thing that stands out for me here is that you all say what you do and you do what you say. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I would yep. never, I trust you implicitly. Um, I've never had any reason to doubt anything at all. And you all, you um, put your agents first and you do everything you have to do to make sure they have everything they need. And um, you're honest. And honesty is, I, honesty is numero uno with me. And if you are going to be sneaky around me, um, I'm out. Yep. And I've never, I've never had that. I've never had that feeling whatsoever here. So last question, Sue, what would you say as coming from a solo agent to joining the team, what are the like two or three things that you can think of just really quickly that you wish you had years ago? Um, I wish I'd had lead generation. Uh, that you always have something to work on. You always have people to call. You always have things to work. Uh, so you're never sitting there twiddling your thumbs thinking, what do I do next? Um, I wish I had had the coaching, um, you know, from using Tom Ferry and from having a business coach down to y'all. Um, mm -hmm. I think that helped immensely. And then I wish, um, on a fun note, um, you know, you always have an answer. If you've got a question, we have a group chat on WhatsApp. And sometimes it's just silly little banter back and forth. And other times when you have a question, you get an answer from five people. And the five people all may have a different answer, but it gives you, for example, five different solutions. Um, one thing I always do with my clients is if there is an issue, before I even take it to them, I've got the solutions. And I've got, well, I can't give them the right answer. I've got three or four solutions and then they can pick from that. And that does wonders to keep them calm mm -hmm. and having a team behind me does wonders to keep me calm. So there's never any freaking out or not much. I mean, I think you would say I do freak out a little bit, but uh, I've, I've, no more than anybody else. No more than anyone else. And I think, you know, the, the group chat for what you're saying there, the, the awesome way we've got that set up is it, it is almost like a Wikipedia. It's, yeah. It, you ask a question, you're getting answers, or you can use the search function, and like maybe that came up before somewhere like months ago, and it's, it just helps everyone get an answer quicker. Yes. Um, and then that way you can service your client at a higher level and getting them information back mm -hmm. way faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, today with Jess, for example, with the HUD stamp for her sale, getting an answer that quickly before business is opened up, I mean, that's huge. Like, okay, cool. Got the solution. I can mm -hmm. jump on that right now. We don't need to delay closing. Yeah. I mean, that stuff like that's massive, especially for new agents as well, I think. Yes. I think new agents will benefit greatly from having that and from having people who can say, oh, I've done that before. Mm -hmm. Because you think you've seen everything and um, nothing else can hit you, and it does. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm dealing with it right now. And there's always something. There's always something in real estate. And I think. You know, we're, when, when we sat down, our whole thing was like, we're not, we, we don't want anyone with the only child mentality. You can't, I'm not sharing my toys. Yeah. This is sharing's caring. And like I said, it's just helping everyone else out. And honestly, I think that's one of the things, one of the huge value adds we mm -hmm. have. It sounds so stupid, but just sharing answers, ideas, solutions to help someone out that doesn't have experience being yeah. in that situation. Um, so we've got every play for any scenario that can be just thrown up in a group chat, for example. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, cool, you're off to the races, go. Oh, it is, I mean, it's, it, I'm mind boggled by the whole thing, because I never, I, I, there's always a solution for me. There you go. If you've got any questions on joining Bond Realty or the Dowling Group and coming on as a team agent, don't forget to comment below or just shoot me a message. We can set up a call and love to meet you in person sooner than later, I hope. Join beyond.